Welcome to today's webinar, Maximizing B2B Campaign Conversions. Today you will learn how to get the most from your marketing campaigns. Join the conversation on Twitter during the presentation with the hashtag B2B Convert. A few housekeeping items before we get started. There's no need to take notes. This presentation deck will be available to you after the webinar. Questions and comments can be asked in real time by using the questions pane and there will be a QA session at the end. Stick around to the end of the webinar to get the details of free limited time offers for you. Your presenters today are Chris Goward, co-founder and CEO of Wider Funnel and Tamara Graves, Senior Director of Demand Generation at Net Prospects. Chris is a marketing strategist and entrepreneur since he began his first web design business in 1994. He developed Wider Funnel's methodologies, including the Lyft model and Kaizen, and is in demand globally as a speaker. He has also had, has an upcoming conversion optimization book by Wiley. You should sign up at the Wider Funnel blog at widerfunnel.com slash blog to be the first in line and have a chance to win a copy when the book is released. Tamra has over 14 years of experience in software and hardware sales and marketing, driving lead generation in both corporate and channel marketplaces. She has managed demand generation and lead generation at organizations including Iron Mountain, Datopia, SAP America, Essential Software, and Dragon Systems. Her specialties include marketing strategy, Marcom programs, content marketing online, online and many other facets of the demand generation world. Well, thank you. We all know that every good program starts with good planning. So much so that many marketers are spending considerably more time on developing and refining their list segmentation practices. As a matter of fact, in the latest B2B magazine, State of Email Best Practices report, a little more than a third of B2B email marketers said they are currently working to do just that. So even before you develop your email offer or landing page, you need to find out if there are enough buyers out there to justify your program and investment. And at the end of the day, this boils down to one key question. How many new customers can there be that will potentially respond to my program? The math here is simple if you know your target market, and for some lucky marketers, you know this answer off the top of your head. But if you don't, you will need to develop a list of companies who meet your target buyer parameters. This varies by company, product, service, or location, each of which could also vary by the number of additional criteria, like industry, company size, annual revenue, or even more specific things like the type of technology they run their businesses on. So not sure where to start? Well, first look to your internal data sources, your billing and or support databases to compile the profile of those who have bought consistently from you in the past. Then utilize any internal tools or third-party vendors you have at your disposal to identify like companies. You might even look to public data like LinkedIn or published top what have you, lists, or even U.S. Census Bureau data, which is free, to get a count of how many companies match your profile. Then deduct from that the number of existing com com customers, and the result is your white space. Now that you know which companies you want to go after, you need to determine who at the company you want to receive your message. If you've been studying your buyer persona, your work here is also simple. You already know your exact, exact list segmentation criteria. If not, then you'll have, need to do a lot of trial and error to create a query that will give you the right list. And no list is perfect the first time. Once you've, you have your first list full or preview file, oops, sorry, closely study the actual title and pick and choose the ones that look best. Oftentimes, I like to create a pivot table of titles, count them, and then sort by the largest concentration and look at the least 
the ones with the critical mass to determine if you really have the ones that you're looking for. And once you do that, look, turn over every rock to find more of these folks. Look at your internal marketing database, go back to your customer or support database, find a publisher or community that already has a relationship with your target buyer, and rent their list. And look at acquiring new names from a trusted third party to grow your marketing database. In doing that, you need to be aware that persona doesn't always easily align with segmentation. You may find when you do persona research that people of several titles have the same pains and use case for your product. You'll want to group these people together to get the same message. And your message should align with the key insights for that persona. And keep in mind that according to the Marketing Sherpa 2011 B2B Marketing Benchmark Report, more than 70% of B2B purchasing decisions involve three or more contacts. So try to get each of them into the top of your program funnel. Now you need to add up all of the contacts you've been able to find from your sleuthing to see if you have enough names going into the top of your program funnel to yield a result that drives enough ROI to make your program pay off. And keep in mind that the average lifespan of a business contact is just two years. So you want to make sure that your data is as fresh as possible. As a matter of fact, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, more than 48 million business people changed jobs last year alone. If you don't have enough names or your database has been, hasn't been cleaned up in a while, you want to consider how you can add additional new names into your program before you start so you aren't struggling to find them once the program has launched. And now you've come to the point in your planning where you want to invite, invest time and effort in understanding your program conversion to try and lift, lift the results from the list you've spent so much love and care developing. And Chris will now share his insights and how to get this type of lift. Great. Thanks, Tamara. And uh, there's some great insights there about, uh, you know, think carefully about what she said uh, with, in, in terms of targeting and segmenting your, your messages. And uh, it's very important to understand what the key drivers are for each segment and persona in your audience. And as Tamara said, you, know, you may be able to uh, group some of those together and, and, uh, and get some efficiencies in your marketing. And you know what's interesting here is that when you look at this model that Tamara's presented, this is a typical uh, conversions to sales funnel. And in fact, this is a, a real example from uh, a real company of, uh, of their uh, conversion rates as you go through the funnel. And when you look at it, what you'll notice is that from the typical marketing qualified lead stage through to closed deals, you've got some really healthy conversion rates there, right? Double digit conversion rates. Uh, where you're feeling pain, in most cases, is the top of the funnel, where from your initial touches to your, your contacts through your email or um, uh, traffic generation activities through to the responses to uh, becoming a marketing qualified lead, the, the conversion rates are very low. And that's what we're talking about today. How do you boost those pain points where, where you're really dropping a lot of the uh, potential leads and how can we uh, increase those uh, through finding the right value proposition, the right messages to uh, touch these, these individuals uh, in your email communications and on your landing pages. So to give you some context, we're going to get right into content here. Um, I've just got one slide to tell you, give you context for the approach we take. So you know, you know many of you on the call uh, we probably haven't met with before, and this might be new information for you. And so for context, Wider Funnel is the conversion optimization agency, the original conversion optimization agency. That's all we do. So what we're talking about today, uh, we have a lot of experience in. All we do is conversion optimization testing. So we're generating insights from those things and, in fact, creating the world's largest database of tested results and principles of what actually works in, in persuasion and conversion. Um, and I always get this question at the end, so I just want to clarify. When we do the tests, we actually control the whole process from planning to copywriting design and results analysis so that we can actually gather those insights. And, and what you're seeing today, what you're going to see today, are the frameworks that we're using and how you can apply them to your own websites. Uh, we also do landing page optimization, which is a subset of conversion optimization, uh, as well as web analytics to support conversion optimization, and a new product that, um, that our customers have asked about and, and we've just launched recently, which is unbiased paid search audits. And what we found, um, the reason is we found that in our analytics work, a, a lot of the insights 
had to do with paid search. And uh, in, mo in a lot of cases, the fox is watching the hen house with your paid search campaigns. Um, if you're doing paid search, you know, you've got an outside agency. If they're reporting on the results, maybe you want to check in and see how things are going. So let's get right into the content uh, and find out uh, how to maximize your conversion rates on your website and your landing pages from your campaigns and how to uh, get principles from those, uh, those uh, tests to uh, impact your whole organization. Uh, start with a little warm up because uh, it's always fun to uh, limber ourselves up and, and test our conversion skills. So I've uh, got a few examples as we go through here. What I'm actually going to do is, is have you guess uh, which of, of variations that we actually tested to find out what works. Um, so the first example is for SAP where they're generating a lot of leads through their website. This was actually a landing page for one of their products for personal reports and the goal was to generate leads. Uh, they have a, several different activities driving uh, visitors to this page. Paid search was a, a large part of it. They also had uh, And the, the challenge was that they needed to get a lot more people starting a trial of the software, so becoming that qualified lead. So here was the original page that we started with, and this is the landing page that they were working with, and what they needed was uh, to get more leads to the trial download. You'll see that the, the, you know, the first link on the page is download a free trial. That's what we needed more of. So how would you approach this? Well, we went through a systematic process, which I'll you know, talk about in a moment, but essentially what you need to know is we tested several variations, and I'm going to show you two of them. The first one is uh, a short page where uh, there, we presented the value proposition clearly. We rewrote the headline to include the value proposition uh, and content, the top benefits, and uh, that call to action above the fold and when the visitor clicked on the download now or the download free trial link, they were redirected to a page that had the actual download form. Now, your first impression might be, wow. As well, unfortunately, we had, were restricted to actually not being able to manipulate the form fields. We couldn't reduce the number of form fields. Um, that was a requirement. And you know, you may be in an organization where you've got a lot of those strict brand standards guidelines that we had to work with and um, uh, and you know that's can sometimes you know you've got to work within what uh, the restrictions you have and, and do the best of what you've got variation B we tested a single step process where rather than try condensed it into one and had value proposition in the left column and above uh, with the headline, subhead, get the free eval download now to start into the form and then fill out the form to download. So the question is, which one generated more leads? And we're going to open up a poll so you can actually vote. We'll go ahead and open that now. And you can go ahead and, and vote on which one you think had more leads. Let's go. Uh, so remember, variation A is, is the uh, two-step process where you click on the button to fill out the form. Variation B is the single step form on the page. All right, so we see the votes coming in. Uh, go ahead, we'll leave it open for a few more seconds. Don't be shy. We won't bite. <laughs> and no one's watching your answers. Uh, so remember variation A, two step form. Variation B is the single step. All right, so we'll close down the voting now and take a look at the results. Very interesting results to see. Look at that. Variation B had significantly more votes. 67% of people voted for variation B. And uh, let's take a look at what actually happened. Well, when we tested this, <clears throat> we redirected all visitors so that they saw one or the other. And it turns out that variation A actually increased conversions to lead generation by 32.5%. So, hey, if you voted for A, you went against the, the grain, uh, give yourself a raise because you just increased your lead gen rate by 32%. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at another example. This, again, is a B2B lead gen uh, software trial download landing page. 
So this was software for video editing professionals, offered by Singular Software. They were getting uh, mostly branded keywords coming into this page, and uh, they needed to get more free trial downloads. So again, here are two variations. Variation A was uh, a short page, a concise, focused message of the value proposition and, and, uh, and the call to action. Try Pluralize free for 30 days. Now, Pluralize is the name of the software, and uh, it was you know, one of the keywords, the main keywords coming into the page. And so you select your, your uh, software and platform uh, edition, click Download Now, and there's credibility indicators below. Variation B, we added more content, value proposition content about the product. And so it's, you know, we've got uh, added a video uh, to, uh, with a demo and more content below about the features. So we're looking at A, which is focused on the call to action, B, which is more content. So we'll open up the poll again, and you can vote on which one you think won. So A is focused on uh, the, uh, the concise content. Variation B is longer page with more features explained. So we see the votes coming in and well, very interesting. Remember variation A is short, variation B is longer page. So which one do you think had more leads generated for their sales team? All right, we'll leave it for a couple, couple more votes. All right, let's close that out and take a look at the results. Interesting. So again, we've got uh, a preference for variation B. Now, is it because you guys prefer variation B or because that's closer to your mouse? Because you seem to be voting for B both times. <laughs> uh, well, regardless, let's take a look at what happened. Now, imagine yourself in your company uh, in a typical scenario, and you need to redesign your landing page or your product page, right? So. How do you do that? What's the process you take to do that? In most cases, you've got a designer or an agency or you know an internal designer who comes and presents the concepts to you, right? And and uh, and you've got to choose which one goes live on your page. So you're going to send all of your traffic to this page. Um, how do you know what's going to perform best? Well, in a lot of companies, there are two methods that most people use. One is called the Hippo method. You may be familiar with it. Uh, the hippo method is the highest paid person's opinion. And uh, so you'll sit in the boardroom and, and the hippo will point at the one they like and of course that's the one that goes live because the hippo has opinions and everyone respects those opinions. So um, another method that people use is the black turtleneck method where you know the person who's in the boardroom with the, the sunglasses on uh, points at the one that uh, he or she likes and, and uh, that one goes live because you know they've got their finger to the pulse of the, your target audience, right? Well. Those are flawed methods, and uh, what we're talking about today is a better method uh, for finding the best design and content and persuasion messaging to maximize your lead generation. So what we do is instead uh, use the customer tested method where every one of your visitors is randomly selected to see a different variation, and then we track the performance of the variations in terms of conversion rate for each of those visitors, regardless of how they convert, whether it's phone calls, uh, emails, a shopping cart, if you've got e-commerce on your site, and, uh, and track which ones work best. So that's what we're talking about today. We had variation A and B, and now remember that uh, we had 69% voted for B. So let's take a look in this case at what actually happened. Turns out that you were right. 13% uh, increase moment. These are 13% more free leads. The only other way to get 13% more leads is to buy 13% more traffic. Send 13% more emails out. You know, buy 13% more names from your list broker, or or advertise 13% more uh, with more budget on your paid search or, or other advertising campaigns. But once you've got them to your landing page, any additional visitors that you can get to convert into marketing qualified leads or prospects or, or customers uh, is, is, is more for your company uh, without extra cost. 
So, you know, do you think that created an impact for the business? Well, uh, they're very happy about that <laughs> result. Uh, not only did they get 13% conversion rate lift, though, this is important, is they have a marketing insight. And uh, the insight here is that even though people are coming in predominantly with, with branded keywords, and in a lot of cases, we see that concise websites work best. In this case, they still needed more persuasion. They needed more information before making that decision. And now they can take that insight uh, and roll it into uh, other tests that we can build upon and say, okay, what, it, what are the best types of content then? We know people are, are reading the content and they're consuming it before taking action. What should we emphasize? So what I want to talk about today is that conversion optimization has been undersold in the marketplace. Um, you know, you've got your website every day just waiting to tell you what works to persuade them to act. And, and in a lot of cases, if you're doing testing at all, what are you testing? If you're testing just button shapes and button colors that a lot of people have been talking about or, or headline colors, uh, you're wasting all that amazing traffic. If that's the way you're testing, this is what we need to talk about today. So I want to correct some misconceptions about conversion optimization and then get into what it actually is and look at a framework that you can use to increase your effectiveness. So first of all, a misconception about conversion optimization is that it can be achieved through consulting and best practices advice. And that's flawed. Uh, consulting and typical best practices are uh, miss the entire context for your particular situation, your particular target audience. And uh, what we find, in, it's interesting, you know, on our blog at Wider Funnel, the most popular page that we've ever published on our blog, the most popular post was about, uh, it was 31 conversion optimization tips. And, and yet, you know, it, it's just a, a reminder to us how frequently people are looking for those quick tips. And yet, we also find through the work we do that the best results come through a structured process and not after seeking after tips and tricks. For example, a lot of people will say that you should always use green buttons because green signifies go, right? And, and it communicates friendliness, openness, and uh, will inspire more action. But I can point to you to blog posts that say you should use red buttons. And, and in fact, in some cases, we've found that orange buttons work best. But you can't use all three colors. <laughs> so which one's best, right? Uh, it, it, it depends on the context for your situation. Uh, a lot of people say you should minimize the form fields in every step of your conversion funnel. Um, others say you should minimize your clicks to conversion. So we've looked, we saw that today with the SAP example. And uh, a two-step form, in fact, in this case, outperformed the single step, even though a lot of people would Uh, and promoting the fact that security icons should be emphasized as prominently as possible on your website, right? If you pay for McAfee and HackerSafe and these other icons, you should make them prominent on your page. Well, what we've found is that in some cases, if you make those too prominent, you can actually raise anxiety in your visitor's mind and reduce your conversion rate. We've seen examples and we've tested examples of uh, making those security icons prominent right near call to action and in fact reducing sales by 6%. Uh, one of the most uh, accepted principles of marketing is that sex sells. Uh, well, you know, we do a lot of testing and found that in, in a lot of cases, sex is, can actually be distracting. Uh, so, you know, it, it gets you thinking about something completely different. Uh, so thinking about, you know, always including a, a smiling person, that's, you know, a, a similar concept. That having a beautiful person on your page will, will make it attractive and People can be, again, distracting and, and, uh, uh, and reduce your conversion rate in a lot of cases. It can be polarizing. Some people say you should use long copy landing pages. They always work best. Other people say minimize your copy length. Lead with benefits, lead with features, etc. So all of these have been promoted as sure win best practices for online marketing and it's just false. Okay, so don't just accept best practice advice. You've got to test it to your particular situation. Uh, the next misconception is that usability testing is conversion optimization. Uh, there are a lot of people doing usability testing or focus groups or uh, tests in small group situations 
and believe they're doing conversion optimization, and they're not. There are all kinds of, of risks with usability testing. They do usability testing does play a role in the conversion optimization mix, but it but if you act uh, solely on the insights or potential insights, spurious information and will often lead to very misleading uh, results if it hasn't been tested quantitatively. There's another uh, misconception about the tools. A lot of tool vendors are promoting that multivariate testing is the best way to get results. And uh, what we find is that, uh, in fact, it's a false promise that you can put any weak idea to a tool and you'll get brilliant results. And that's just not the case. And, and surprisingly so is the pre and post method. You know, in some cases, you'll, you'll have an old page, a landing page, or a website, and uh, you'll go into a redesign process, you'll redesign it, flip the switch on the new one, and fantastic. You know what? Great results. Uh, everyone's happy. Uh, results are, are increasing and rising, and uh, that's, that's a winner, right? Uh, it, until you consider the effects of seasonality and competitive actions and marketing offers, and all of the other impacts on your conversion rate. And in fact, a pre and post method test is essentially meaningless. Your results will be misleading. Uh, an inconclusive test or a failed test is a test that gives you inaccurate data, like you'll get from a pre and post test or a before and after test. is the intersection of three things. Number one, persuasion marketing, where the conversion strategist understands how to emphasize the right value, value proposition with clarity and persuade people and give them the motivation to act. And there are all kinds of, of principles within on uh, uh, minimize distraction and uh, along uh, within their motivation. The other compartment is experience design. And that's where once a person has motivation, we give them the ability to act. And, and that includes usability uh, as well as just uh, creating experiences that are, uh, are inviting to your visitors. And the third component is the scientific method, where we use a rigorous process to test our hypotheses within those other two areas to find out what actually works. That's where conversion optimization sits, and that's where you'll get the best results. So how do you get those results? Let's, let's talk about that, and we're going to look at a website. Uh, it's all about creating powerful hypotheses to test. Now, before we get into the frameworks, I want to let you know that whatever business you're in, these will work for you. Uh, we're is that the, the frameworks and the methodologies we're using are working across industries, whether it's B2B or B2C, uh, lead generation, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, wherever the traffic source is, uh, the frameworks work. And people are people, whether they're sitting in SAP ordering you know, toner for their printer or they're sitting in their basement ordering socks. Um, you know, they're people and they're persuaded with the same, uh, they, they, they have the same methodology for coming to conclusions and, and taking action. So um, let's take a look at the, uh, the framework we use. Uh, this is the LIFT model, and it's composed of the six conversion factors that, uh, uh, that influence your conversion rate. And, uh, and then we'll take a look at an example of how it works. So the value proposition is the core of the LIFT model. And what it shows you is that the value proposition perceived benefits and costs for a visitor to take the action that you want them to take on your website. And, uh, and that value proposition will determine your potential for conversion rate lift and your potential for, uh, for selling more in, in, in your, uh, to your marketing. Uh, there are components that increase the, the communication effectiveness of your value proposition and some that decrease it. So we're looking at relevance and clarity and increasing the effectiveness where relevance is how relevant is the communication to your visitors' needs, 
and how relevant is it to the incoming source media? Does it match up with your email campaigns? Um, do you have a, a good scent trail, for example, that follows you from the, the email creative and the list and their needs through to the landing page and through the conversion funnel on your website? Uh, clarity is clarity of the value proposition, clarity of the uh, copywriting, clarity of the imagery and the eye to do on your emails and in your landing page. And then look at anxiety and distraction as detractors that reduce your conversion rate. You know, anxiety is anything that creates uncertainty in the visitor's mind of taking the action. Distraction is uh, anything that redirects attention from the primary call to action, the primary message. And then finally we have urgency where, um, you know, if you have any experience in sales, you know that you've got to close the deal now, give them a reason to act now. And we can test with all of these factors to find the best composition of each of the six conversion factors that will maximize your conversion rate. So there's lots more information. If you Google wider funnel lift uh, later on, you can find you know, blog posts and, and more information about that. But um, let, let's take a look at an example so you can see how that works. So we, we saw earlier the example of singular software uh, with their pluralized product. Now, what I'm going to show you is some of the process we use to come up with those variations, those challenger uh, landing pages. This was the original page that they came to us with. And uh, so the first thing we do after you know an in-depth discovery to understand, of course, the target audience and, and the product is a lift analysis, uh, which is a heuristic analysis uh, that based on the experience of our strategists and the, this database of tested results that we're gathering in similar industries and other industries that we can uh, pull uh, insights from, on what to improve, where are the problems based on the lift model. So for example, we see problems with clarity where the, the call to action labels are not typical of some so most software uh, calls to action where you know, they might say download versus try. The hero image of fish, I mean the first thing you would think is you know, am I buying fish food or is this, uh, is this software? <laughs> And uh, you know, there's there's some um, uh, you know a good metaphor with these these fish, and how because the tool allows you to synchronize multiple streams of video and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it's it's a clever idea, but it's too clever, right? People don't get the idea right away. Uh, the main there is no main headline at the top of the page. Another clarity factor, another clarity factor. Not enough product information to make a decision. But then there's also distraction with overwhelming technical details that aren't related to the decision, but are related to a step that's later in the funnel. There's an extra click that's needed to download. Uh, there's some value proposition component here. There's no credibility in the Again, value proposition, it's unclear how many times the software and they're just missing the social proof, which is a key component for their value proposition. So these are some of the high priority factors that we identified. There were many more, um, but, but these are the important ones here that we want to emphasize. And then from those, we can flip uh, the, the problems, these lift analysis points, into hypotheses to test. And after doing that, we looked at you know, running a series of tests to maximize conversion rates. Now, we looked at one example earlier, and here's another example of an isolation test that we did where variation A is, is a, a static image. And the only difference between A and B is that we have a static image here, which is um, a screenshot of the product. And if you click on it, it'll show a screenshot, a larger screenshot of, of the, uh, the tool. Uh, variation B is, a, is the professional video demo that they've created. And of course, being video editors uh, themselves, they had access to, to great production technology and have a very compelling video there. So the question is, which one of those had the highest conversion rate lift. So we're going to open up the uh, poll again. And you can vote on uh, whether you think it was A, which is the static screenshot of the software itself and the interface, and variation B, which is the video that uh, demonstrates the product. So we'll leave voting over for a few more seconds. And uh, hopefully you haven't nodded off here and you're 
Now, ready to vote. So remember, variation A is the static screenshot. Variation B is the video demo. All right, so we'll close down the poll results, take a look at what you think happened, and look at that, variation B. And 69%, again, 69% uh, of the vote. Uh, we just love B today. Well, let's take a look at what actually happened. So, looking at uh, the test results, we see that, uh, unfortunately for the majority, look at that, variation A1, a 17% lift in conversion rate. Now, what's interesting is, again, we talked about best practices, and everyone right now seems to be talking about video being a best practice for landing page. You can't have a landing page without video, they say. Uh, well, it turns out that, um, in fact, those gurus were wrong. Uh, you know, in some cases, video can be distracting and actually reduce people's uh, uh, ability and, and, and uh, tendency to convert. And, uh, and in fact, we find that a lot of times static content works a lot better. Well, they're wrong except when they're not because in another case, and I know this is a B2C example, but uh, it's a compelling one where what we found testing with Wine Express, they have these email lists where they're sending out thousands, hundreds of thousands of emails every day to their list. And by testing several different variations for them, we found that the more we emphasize this video, which is a video of their sommelier uh, and, and his tasting notes on today's wine of the day, the more we emphasize that video, the more sales they got. So keep that in mind. Context is key. And if you haven't tested, you don't know for sure that uh, the advice you're getting is, is going to work. Okay, so, so we want to give you some you know, takeaways that you can take back to the office today. Um, if you've taken nothing else from this, uh, remember, first of all, to target the prospects that are most likely to buy. And you can enhance your list, of course, with, with services like Net Prospects and, and make sure that you look at your segmentation to find those audiences that will uh, ha have unique needs and find the messages that are most relevant to them. And, and think about using the lift model on your emails as well as on your landing pages to find the best uh, messages and test the best messages. Second is best practices are evolving fast. You need to keep up by testing what actually works in your particular situation in your industry. Uh, and for best results, you know, we find, of course, get a proven outsider to help target your, your conversion optimization and avoid the risk of your internal focus. And we find a lot of cases where you know, you've stared at your website for so long that, that coming up with a fresh perspective is very difficult to do. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, again, there, there are more insights here that, that you can take away. I'm sure there's a lot we've covered today that you'll want to, um, to go in and research some more. Uh, and, and again, we'll, we'll send the slides to you afterwards. So before you leave, though, we're going to have a QA session in a moment. Questions and ask questions in the right-hand panel. If you have questions that have come up, and we've got three uh, special announcements, free offers for you to take advantage of today. One, and uh, is a complimentary data assessment. So I'll ask uh, Tamara to explain this a little bit. Sure. So if you're struggling to figure out how your database is today, especially given the number of people changing jobs over the past year, uh, we're here to help. We have a complimentary assessment where. You share um, a sample um, as much as you'd like from your database, your marketing database, and we will run it through our clean step methodology and give you um, a assessment, a, a ranking of how good and, and bad your data is. And this is complimentary, uh, done under non-disclosure. We don't keep your data, but we'll let you know um, your health of your database. And anyone interested in uh, participating in that exercise, can email my colleague, Katie Martell, at kmartell at netprospects.com. Great. Thanks, Tamara. And <clears throat> a couple more here that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed the uh, exercise here of, of guessing which one, uh, which variation one, you can do that on uh, a new website we've just launched uh, at conversionskills.com. And essentially, this is a place where we publish research that we're, we're doing on the test that we're running. And so you can test your conversion skills, and you can actually download the full case studies 
of what uh, worked and the and the results of the tests. It's it's completely free, and you can go through and and uh, and look at examples there at conversionskills.com. Um, and I'll also mention that if you're interested in a landing page evaluation, we have ten time slots that are available for this webinar uh, on a first come first serve basis. So if you're interested in that, uh, go ahead and email hello at widerfunnel.com and tell us the URL of the web page you'd like evaluated. And if you've got a minimum 30,000 unique visitors per month, uh, you can qualify for that. And so go ahead and, and, and send that email. And uh, you know, on a first come first serve basis, we'll make sure that we allocate those um, to, uh, to get that free landing page evaluation. And, and this is a, a, a very valuable uh, half hour meeting that you'll get with one of our uh, helpful team members here. They can help you to to find the best way to maximize your conversions. Okay, so we'll open up the floor here for questions, and uh, and Nancy's been collecting the questions as they've been coming in, so she can direct questions to uh, the appropriate person and make sure that we get we get those answered. All right, so we'll take a look at the questions we've got coming in. Looks like there's. Just reviewing some of the questions that are coming in on the panel. Uh, there is a question about the web traffic needed. I know Chris has already touched on that just now, but perhaps you'd like to expand on, on how much web traffic is needed to get meaningful results. Right, good, yeah, um, good question. What we're seeing is that uh, to get statistically significant results from the tests, uh, you need a, a minimum amount of traffic, and uh, you know, typically 30,000 visitors is, is sort of a, a minimum to get good results in a meaningful, uh, within a reasonable time frame, but you can run tests with, with lower traffic as well, uh, it just you just have to manage expectations that it'll be in market for a little bit longer. But but the the actual amount of traffic needed to run a test depends on several things, and uh, it depends on the conversion rate that you've got on your your pages, uh, and it also depends on the difference in conversion rate between the variations. So the higher basically the higher improvement you can make with the challenger variations, the faster your test will complete. Uh, so, but a typical rule of thumb we're seeing is that if we can get between 100 and 300 conversions per variation, we'll actually get a statistically significant result at at a 95% confidence level, which is a very high benchmark, a very high bar to to reach. Uh, if uh, if traffic is lower, then we can also test to a lower bar. So we can test to an 80% confidence level at uh, at lower traffic levels. But um, the more traffic, the better, of course, for testing. Uh, uh, and, and that's, I mean, essentially those are the rules of thumb. So you want to you aim for your high traffic pages to start your testing on. And what we often see as a good strategy is for get, gaining insights about your value proposition with your highest traffic pages and then moving those insights into the other pages on your websites uh, to you know, test smaller variations, more dramatic variations, and, and very pinpointed on based on the insights you've seen with the higher traffic areas of the site. Uh, we have one for Tamara here. How do you build a persona? Great. Well, building a persona is not something that we can probably answer in just a few minutes, but it is so critical when you're building your list. And there is really a lot of extensive research out there. And my personal favorite is buyerpersona.com. Um, there's a woman by the name of Adele Ravella who I've had the pleasure to take several classes from, and I often go to her site to get more um, news and tips on how to do that. So that would be my recommendation. All right. A good link, and we'll we'll make sure when we send. Uh, uh, if you answered that question, uh, make sure that you email 
uh, send an email and, and uh, Tamara can get you that uh, uh, link to more information about that. Definitely will. Okay, just looking at a few more questions here that have come in or answering. Uh, Chris, if I run an offer through an emailer, what works well? Uh, a call for action with an email ID and phone number or asking them to register a form in a landing page? Yeah, great question. Great question. So what you're, getting what you're getting at there is do you want to have, what's the call to action that works best for, for lead generation? And uh, what we're finding is it, it, it depends on um, your particular business model. In some cases, it's best to get people to act right online. Um, in other cases, though, what we're seeing, of course, is, is what you'll find that in the back end is that sometimes a phone call can be more valuable, a more valuable lead. So what you want to do is, is evaluate the um, uh, conversion rates through the rest of your funnel to find out which of those you want to emphasize. And we, we've actually found by testing different um, emphasis, we can, in some cases, increase total conversion rates by having multiple types of, of, uh, of conversion goals, so phone calls and forms on, on pages. Um, but it really depends uh, in the eye flow um, which one's more emphasis, emphasized on the page. And in fact, there are some designs and eye flows that we're finding, uh, you know, in some cases, some fewer form fills or vice versa. But in some cases, we're actually seeing that there is no cannibalization um, by providing both options if they're presented in the right way. So, you know, I guess the short answer is, first of all, find out based on your conversion rates historically or if you can track by lead source which ones are more valuable. And that will tell you a little bit about which ones you should emphasize. And then we can do some testing about on, uh, on, on which ones, uh, the design that emphasizes each one that minimizes, cannibaliza minimizes cannibalization, maximizes total value based on the unique value for each, and uh, total uh, revenue potential from all the lead sources. Okay, we have another one for Tamara here. How do you keep your email list clean? Great, well that's never an easy task. Um, if you are using a marketing automation tool, uh, you do have some help. Your system will typically suppress hard bounces automatically from your sends after a certain threshold. But if you don't have a tool like this, you really have to do it manually. Um, when you get the bounce backs, manually go in and update your database. Sometimes you'll get some valuable information from auto replies, and if you can harvest the data from that, it will help you um, keep it up to date. Sometimes the auto reply might even, the message may have gone through, but the auto reply tells you that the person is no longer with the company, um, so it didn't count as a hard bounce, but it's not somebody that will ever respond. So you want to clean that up so that your um, overall response rate in, isn't affected by those false uh, positives, and then harvest the data on the auto reply to see if you can't engage that new contact, contact into your program. And of course, there's always third parties who can help you verify your database, um, either on an ad hoc or periodic basis. Great, good stuff. Okay, we have time for one more question. I'm getting a signal here, and then and then what we'll do uh, is, uh, yeah, go ahead with that one, Nancy. So this is for Chris. When you look at conversion rate, do you look at conversion rate for the given landing page or total conversion rate of the user links through to another part of your site from the landing page? Right, yeah, and and so what I want to make clear here is that, you know, a lot of times um, testing is done where, uh, based on micro-conversions, and uh, that can be dangerous. And what I mean by a micro-conversion is uh, a, a very small action that may indicate interest, but uh, may not flow through to an actual conversion to a lead. So for example, some people are, are testing on landing pages, and uh, they might test on clicking on the button to request a quote, or clicking on a social media link to like this page, or, or, 
or clicking on something else. What we're finding, though, is that when we've tracked those types of micro-conversions as well as conversions that are actual leads, so completing a form fill or completing a purchase or, or some other uh, value, valuable action that's closely tied to revenue, is not a high correlation between conversions, even though you get more of them, don't lead to more major conversions and lead generation. So what we always want to do is when we're doing testing, uh, track the actual conversion that's as closely tied to revenue as possible. So, so even if it's on the same page, if we're testing on a landing page, we can actually track conversions that happen anywhere on the website, anywhere else, um, on, within the regular site or within the, another conversion funnel doesn't matter. And what we'll do is find out how did the, the variations on this page influence a person's activity all the way through to the point that they become a lead and, and as close as possible to becoming a valuable lead that's, that's qualified for you. So, so that's an important concept to keep in mind when you're testing. Make sure that you're, not, you're testing for the right things and not just those micro-conversion indicators. And in some cases, we're finding them inversely correlated. So, so some variations in challenger pages that are getting more of those early micro conversions are actually getting less leads generated. So you're getting more looky loos, um, but less people that actually become value valuable leads. So, so I hope that's helpful and answers your question. Um, there might be a few more questions. Some of them are, are very similar to the ones we've answered here. So what we're going to do is follow up by email. Uh, we're also going to uh, bring together a few of these webinar questions that we've gotten over the last few weeks from a variety of webinars that we've been doing. And, uh, and put them into a blog post so, so that uh, you know, if, if you didn't get exactly the question you, you asked answered here, um, go ahead to widerfunnel.com slash blog and sign up and we'll make sure that we get, uh, you, you get your answer there. So, so thank you very much for attending and, and thanks again, Tamara, for um, presenting with us and inviting us to come and do this and a lot of fun to work with you guys. Um, and uh, remember to take advantage of Tamara's offer as well. Um, I'll just flip back to that one too so you can make sure that you copy down that email address. So email Katie Martell if you'd like that data assessment. Remember to, um, to take advantage of that. It's kmartell with two L's at netprospects.com. And uh, of course, you'll get this presentation afterwards as well. Uh, check out conversionskills.com to test your skills for free. And then the uh, landing page evaluation offer. And I think we're already seeing the emails coming in for those. So um, go ahead and, and send that email right away if you want to take advantage of that at hello at widerfunnel.com. Uh, thanks again, and uh, hope to see you on our next webinar as well. We'll, we'll have more coming up in the next few weeks. So um, uh, until then, happy converting. Thank you.